Megan Angelo, a native of Quakertown, Pennsylvania and a graduate of Villanova University, has had a broad and diverse career as an author and journalist. She has written about television, film, women, pop culture, and motherhood for publications such as The New York Times, Glamour, The Wall Street Journal, and Slate. Today, Megan is visiting to speak to our Communications Pathway students about her career and her debut novel, Followers, which is set to be released on January 14th, 2020. The story follows Orla Cadden and Floss, two roommates with dreams of success who plan to enter into the high-profile lives they desire. 35 years later, in a closed-off California village full of government-appointed celebrities who spend their days constantly on camera, a woman named Marlo discovers a secret and decides to run away from her corporate sponsors to seek the truth. Before I talk to you guys about how I became a writer, which there's a million different ways to do it, who here thinks that maybe you would like to be some kind of writer professionally when you grow up? And how many of you feel like you know how to do that? That's good, because I was like, I have no idea how to do it when I was your age. Today in the studio, we have Megan Angelo, writer of the upcoming novel Followers, coming out this January. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. To start off, what were some of the things you wrote for the New York Times or Glamour? So for both places, I mostly wrote about celebrities. I did celebrity profiles and covers and stuff like that. And for the New York Times, I wrote a lot about comedy and television. What was your experience like at both of those places? Um, they're amazing places to work. I loved working at Glamour um, because just a lot of strong, cool women coming up with ideas. And the Times is obviously a legend. Um, with all that being said, I mostly worked for both of those places from home in my house, which is not as exciting, but that's kind of the reality of being a working journalist today. How did that help start your career in writing? Mm. Well, um, it helped me see a lot of stories and think, oh, there's a lot of cool stories that are true, but sometimes I just want to make things up. And it really inspired a lot of the book because the book is basically about two girls who try to get Instagram famous. So knowing how famous people worked and what things look like behind the scenes of celebrity was really helpful. This is more of like a transitional type of thing, but going from writing coverage, from reporting and everything, how was the transition from going from that from writing a book? It was hard, mostly because I didn't know if the book would work. So I basically took a really big risk in my career and said I'm going to step back from journalism because I don't have time to do both right now. And I took a year off from everything and just worked on the book. And luckily it worked out, but it was definitely a big transition, so. Um, what were some of the things that inspired you to write the book? Instagram, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, really, the Kardashians are a big inspiration. I wanted to come up with a character who would stop at nothing to be as famous as someone like Kim Kardashian. Uh, and technology, and just thinking about is it good for us that we use our phones so much? Are we all gonna be you know, old people in 50 years who have been looking at our phones for 50 years and what's that gonna do to our brains and how we interact with each other? So, a lot of different stuff. Are there any real life experience that you had that made it into the book? Um, sort of, I mean, I, you know, in the book, there's the one roommate wants to be the Kim Kardashian and the other roommate is always sort of, like having to do everything for her, almost like an assistant, and help make her famous. And I didn't have that exact experience, but I definitely have been in a position of, um, you know, interviewing celebrities on red carpets, and that's a very weird world because you're always sort of, you know, behind the celebrity. What they want is what goes, and you have to fit into things. And an example of that is like one time I was working a red carpet and. Uh, Gail King, do you know Gail King? Anyone? Okay, she's like Oprah's best friend. She stepped on my foot in like a very, very high heel and my foot was killing me, but I just finished the interview until she moved on to the next person. And then I went and found like a lot of Band-Aids, so. <laughs> How much of pop culture influenced the book? So much. 
Um, I'm just obsessed with celebrities and pop culture and uh, the like the main guy in the book is sort of a hybrid of Justin Bieber, Bieber and Shia LaBeouf and like you know all these people with really outsized profiles and huge social media followings and stuff like that so yeah I drew so much from pop culture. Did any of your real life and work experiences influence this book? Definitely. Um, uh, the girl who is not the famous one in the book works as a blogger in the book. And so you really get to see how being a blogger is so tied to traffic and doing anything for clicks, even when it's not necessarily the right thing to do. And so some of that was stuff that I had had experience with writing for the internet. Um. After Followers comes out, what's next? <laughs> oh, such a good question. Um, I'm working on two books right now. Uh, one is about a bar studio, which is like where moms go to exercise. I feel like none of you guys <laughs> go to a bar studio, but they find out that there's essentially like an underground uh, all-female spy force that the bar studio is a front for. And the other book is almost like a catfish style story about someone who makes up a person and then doesn't know what to do when the person they thought they made up actually materializes in their world. So, yeah, we'll see if I can finish either of them, but I'm optimistic. <laughs> okay, you talked a lot about, a lot about celebrities. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest shock to, of meeting a celebrity, or like a contrast? Well, I will tell you, I mean, I don't get starstruck with celebrities that often, but there were two people who really made me starstruck. One was Tina Fey, who is just so nice and normal and um, was a hero of mine. So it was, you know, I had to like really concentrate on not acting like that as I was interviewing her. And the other person who really made me starstruck was Alicia Keys because I met her on the set of a photo shoot and she was in like an enormous costume and makeup and I was like, she's the most beautiful person I've ever seen. So there's definitely, you know, some contrast between how you see people on screen and how you meet them in real life sometimes and other times they completely live up to your expectations, so. Do you believe that social media popularity is a reflection of success? <sighs> Well, it's a reflection of success if you care about being popular on social media, is what I would say. You know, because I think, like anybody else, I feel good when I get a bunch of followers one day, or I feel good if someone tweets something about the book. Um, but sometimes when I feel like I'm doing things just to get followers, I start to be like, why do I care about this? You know, it's just something that I see when I open my phone. It's not actually real. How is social media explored within this book and within the characters? So the book has two timelines. Mm -hmm. um, half the book is set in 2015, and that's when the girls are trying to get famous. So it's a lot about them trying to like buy followers, get followers, start controversies on Twitter, things like that. And then the part of the book that's in 2051 looks at a future version of social media and celebrity where celebrities all live in a closed community. They can hear their followers 24 seven inside their head. And we don't have phones anymore. We have devices that actually use our brain waves to speak to us right into our mind. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like if you were getting trolled on Twitter, but you're like, well, I'm just gonna shut my phone and go to sleep, but you never could because it's wired to your brain. Mm -hmm. What advice can you give to others that are aspiring to be writers? Just keep writing and just keep reading and don't worry if it's not good and don't worry if you are writing differently at home on your own time than you are in school. Um, chances are if you feel passionate enough about something to be doing it over and over then you're on the right trail and someone else is going to relate to it too. Final question. What would you like readers to take away from followers? You know, honestly, I mean, I know that the book brings up a lot of thoughts about how much we should use our phones, how much we should share, uh, whether privacy is something we need more of. But I really, the book is also a lot of fun. And honestly, I write books that I think will make people have a good time. Like, I just want people to pick up this book and want to turn every page before they put it down. So. Well, thank you so much for coming thank to talk with you. us. Good luck in your book. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.